So hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So it's a bit dark. I am currently sitting here inside of the Chang'an CS75 Plus. Yes, the very first Chang'an car on my channel. <laughs> More coming soon. So I would like to thank Chang'an Show for allowing me to review the C75 and upcoming two more models. Okay, big disclaimer already. Sadly, no new CS35 Plus. Hopefully, I'll do a review on that as well coming soon. This is probably my favorite Chang'an. I mean, this CS75 Plus. First time I saw it in the flesh before, way back when. Does it look like a Lexus RX? Not beautiful, but very striking to look at. Yes, there are Lexus cues all over this Chang'an CS75. The front and also the spindle grille that's almost like a lexus spindle grille and the rear tail lights look like a lexus as well i mean look in this interior alone even the red queue i've sat in an rx this red leather is like almost on par with the lexus themselves also this means this cs75 now takes the new title for me of the most striking looking crossover goodbye hyundai kona no offense <laughs> also you have four brake lights yes you have four the one whole piece behind and then there are two more on those carbon fiber spoiler and yes that carbon fiber spoiler is real that's unlike most of its competition it's like wrapped in carbon fiber this one is pure carbon fiber so lights pretty striking as well the looks the red accents here and there even on the side cladding not that much but just the right amount and as you can see, there's a lot going on on the front grille. There's like a lot of protrusions and vents. Ground clearance is 190 millimeters, on par with the competition as well. And speaking of competition, this competes with the Tiggo 7 Pro and Maxus D60. I won't compare this with the Tiggo 8 and Geely Okavango because those are seven seaters. So let's focus on the five seaters. Oh, why not as well? Uh, Geely Azkara. Luxury, that one. That'd be a big ballpark. That's been my benchmark of the compact SUV. So I wonder how this CS75 will fare. Let's find out in a bit. Also the hood, there are a lot of creases. And then side mirrors, it's gloss black with, there's a, as you can see, their 360 degree camera. I'll demo that as well later. And the rear, it's like your usual crossovers. There's cladding here and there. Also the exhausts are real, but the real one is just inside the surrounds. But I'll give it a pass. It's still where it's supposed to be. And that's about the looks with the CS75. As I said, the new most striking subcompact crossover with the looks. And probably my favorite looking crossover at the moment. So transition, we'll go here in the interior. So here in the interior of the CS75, almost Lexus-like. I mean, there are barely hints of plastic here and there. Even on top of the dashboard, there's a lot of squish in it. It's leather. Even on the door, you have leather here and there. I even love the looks of the door handle. Whoever designed this, I'll put him on screen. You did a good job, sir, ma'am. <laughs> and then, yeah, continuing in the door, red leather here, lovely materials, window switches as well. Yes, they're plastic, but they're chrome bits on the switches itself, so nice touches there. The only plastic here is where your bottle holder and cubby spaces are. Sadly, no water jug test today, but a one liter bottle definitely fits there and then here on the left side of the dashboard containing the red leather here two card holders and look at these air conditioning vents they're not really striking but they're designed really well i must say and then steering wheel it's okay it's a bit girthy but it's still soft to the touch and you have a flat bottom as well so it gives it a sporty look yes there's a gloss black and chrome trims on it as well but it's fine and then you have a lot of buttons here but they look nice as well there's even a chrome switch on it for the volume and then for i assume the infotainment system and then here infotainment system it's a 12 inch infotainment system not the biggest of the changans but seeing it here for the first time it is massive that this particular unit is low but i'll demo all of the infotainment the tech the digital cluster with the test drive unit later on also the digital cluster is 7 inches so everything's high tech there's barely hints of analog here and then here in the center console your engine starts top on it is big I mean but at least it's trying to be different and then I assume beside the engine starts top button up for your air conditioning controls they're all touch sensitive and then below that you have a USB port 12 volt socket and my phone in this cubby space fits perfectly no wireless charging here but at least your phone fits. And then here where the gear lever is also, have, I don't do this that much, but okay. The build quality is sturdy. You have gloss black here and there on the gear lever and then a chrome trim around it, but it's not too much. It's mostly covered with this 
grayish silver trim here. Okay, that's very good. And then you have two cup holders here with plastic grips. One small one and one big one. One liter bottles can definitely fit. And there also is a place for charging your key. I don't know why they put it here in the cup holders instead of the front where the cubby space is. Anyway, and then more controls here for your electronic parking brake, your dive mode buttons. <laughs> and then for your auto hold function and then your 360 degree camera. And then even opening the central glove box, it's chrome. Then the opening is a bit narrow but it's deep enough. Not much toys in here. Also what's cool with the central console box, there's a knob here for cooling your drinks. Wine bottles will not fit in here but if you have small bottles like cans, pineapple juices, you can fit them in here at least. So with the amount of crossovers I tried, this is probably one of the best seats. It's so soft, the quality, and it's red. Perfect. Glove box. Okay, pretty decent. And then above here, you have your controls for your panoramic sunroof. It's massive, by the way. And then visors, you have a vanity mirror here. No, they don't extend, but even the sun visors, it's thick, this sun visors. Even the quality is so good, like... Even the headliner, soft fabric, perfect. So, so far so good with the Chang'an CS75. Let's check out the second row. So here in the second row of the Chang'an CS75. That's not on the door by the way, that's somewhere here in the back. No idea. Oh, the plate number, okay. Anyway, back to the review. Before I continue here in the second row, I did notice a few more things on the exterior. There is a carbon fiber trim on the sides. It's not mimicking a fake vent, but it's just there for show. Also nice S logos all around the car. They're all red, by the way. I really like this theme of the CS75. And as well, for all the door handles outside, and there's like a chrome bit on it. So here in the second row of the CS75, this is probably one of the most spacious I've driven in its class. Uh, as Kara like, maybe uh, just a bit more spacious. Yes, it's that spacious. Toys here in the back. You have two isofix anchor points on each side. You have a central armrest here. Even this is soft. Sadly, no cup holders, but hey, at least there is. And then you have two air conditioning vents here. And then one USB port and a very small cubby space here. And then you have two map pockets on each side of the seat. Also, there are two speaker setups on each side of the door. One below where your cubby space and your bottle holders. And a one liter bottle just fits. And then also on top of the door handles. Even that's nicely designed. And then being the most spacious in its class. Feet room, leg room, and headroom. Pretty amazing. Headroom just a bit eaten up because of this panoramic sunroof. I'm 5'4 by the way. I am still fine as you can see. Also, nice design lights here where your grab handles are. On the left and right side of the seats, maybe around 6 foot, might struggle a bit here. But this is the other thing. They can sit here in the middle and this is what's cool. There's no transmission tunnel at all here. It's completely flat. So, meaning sitting here in the middle, the headroom now, the cover of the panoramic sunroof is open. So, I have that much, that much space. So, yeah, pretty impressive to sit here in the middle. Despite... The middle seat being a bit harder than usual, I'll be happy to sit here. It's still comfortable to sit in. And knowing there's no transmission tunnel, my legs can just simply relax. So with that it, I'll show you the boot space. So this is the boot space of the Chang'an CS75 Plus. With all the seats up, it's 620 liters of space. As you can see, you can fit a lot of stuff in here. And underneath the false floor, you have space for your spare tire. And then you have six hooks on each side. And there are two cubby spaces as well. And with all of the seats down, you have 1,450 liters of space. I thought I'd never know the answer to this. So, okay, like this CS75, it's low, but this does not have an electronic tailgate, but how to open it, it's manual and there's a button. You need electricity to open the boot. But what's cool, I just found out, that's how I was able to show you the boot. You open this thing here, and then pull this. And you're free. Okay. Also, what's cool with this uh, Chang'an CS75 Plus? Usually, when you fold back up the seats, right, the seat belts will get eaten. 
but not this one. I mean, even though the seat belts are behind, look, there's like a gap here, so you can just easily put them back forward. There's no like some other crossovers, there are humps all the way here, but this one doesn't have it at all. So this is the engine of the Chang'an CS75 Plus. It's a one and a half liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine that produces 176 horsepower and 265 newton meters of torque, and is mated to a six-speed automatic transmission. So those power figures alone, it's on par with the competition. And what I've seen in some reviews, this Chang'an CS75 Plus is more geared towards comfort, but as they say, it's one of the most comfortable in its class. So, with that power figures alone, I want to see if it's still Pepe. You know, not me, I'm a performance oriented driver. So, before we have a drive, I'll demo the infotainment and all the tech. Okay, infotainment, pretty decent, responsive enough. Actually, there's a lot you can do. There's just a little bit of a delay, as you can see, but it's crisp enough. And then, reverse camera. You have a 360 degree camera for this anyway. Yeah, the resolution is not the best. However, it's still good to have. And then, this is your 7-inch digital cluster. There's more stuff here on the right. No idea what this is for. Are these your heel descent control? Oh, you control it from here? What the heck? Even your stability control would Ah, oh, okay. Most of its competition, the buttons are here. But for this CS75, they're here inside the digital cluster. Even your auto leveling headlamps are also here. That's actually so cool. I didn't even think of that. And that much you can play. Oh, wait. This can change with your dive modes, if not mistaken. Yes, they're individual. Ah, okay. So let's play with that. Oh. Okay, let's try to find that driving setting. Okay, I'll just be honest. Speaking oh. of, that looks this looks like a Ford territory layout. So driving the Chang'an CS75 Plus. Okay, first impressions. The steering is light, but there's like good amount of weight of it. And then also there's cornering cam corner camera, I don't know what you call that features. So when you turn a signal, the camera opens to which side you are going, so example left or right. Similar to a cooler actually. And then first impressions, yes I'm just in eco mode and just in drive. Okay, seems doable, responsive enough. And then start flooring it. Okay, it's a bit delayed, a bit, oh my god! Okay, it's quick. Okay, it's quick, yes. I understand now what they mean by delay. Yeah, this is just in eco mode, but it gets going. Wow, yeah. <laughs> and then this is the other thing I noticed as well. I mean, the shift time is pretty good. And then NVH as well, pretty alright as well. And then I understand now with the amount of reviews I watch. This thing is so comfortable. I already went through rough patches, actually, really, really fast. And it soaks them up pretty well. Like that. Yeah, and Vage is pretty stellar as well. Like, it's on par with the... Not as good as the Sky, but second best. That's how good this is. And then here on tight streets, just driving here around Shaw Boulevard. Actually, I'm just in the back of Shaw Boulevard. Yeah, I understand now why this is probably one of the most comfortable in its class. It's just going around your cruising, pretty easy, and it's not that delayed now. The sensors are not that sensitive. I was actually too near to bicycle, but it even beep at me. Here in the rougher patches. Okay, let's try here. Normal mode. I assume this is the best balance of eco and sport mode. Yeah, here over rough patches. I'm gonna demo it now. Oh, soaks it up pretty well. And let's just floor it. Normal mode. Delay, but... Oh, it will just pick up like crazy. Body lean... Yeah, there is. It's not as much as you expect. So it's not too bad. And I just noticed right now, visibility all around is good. The CD pillar might be a bit big, but it's fine. There's the use of side mirrors. Although I did notice 
the side mirrors are quite big so it might get a bit in the way but you'll get used to it and let's start sport mode and manual mode now okay let everyone go through first I have no idea what to expect okay response a bit better but not the sportiest to drive but hands down one of the most comfortable I did not expect this at all with this chance CS 75 and over uphill easy and I like there's a little bit of hint of turbo whistle can hear it ever so slightly only and going see over going over humps soaks them up pretty well the suspension is soft I mean there's just a bit of bounce but it's not that terrible kind of bounce like it's the suspension is stiff no as I said earlier it soaks them up pretty pretty good and yes handling despite not being the most sportiest I mean it still steers <laughs> that's what's important and this thing is nice so if this is gonna be like your first Chang'an I highly recommend this Chang'an CS75 <laughs> okay that power is not bad oh I'm still in sport mode I just leave it in eco mode I mean individual, I, I, I've not played with that anymore. I think you can set up the steering wheel, the transmission, the throttle, uh, to at everyone. But I'll just leave it in Eco for now. I will admit Eco might be a bit too sluggish but I mean Eco, it does the job. Any over here rough patches, I mean. <laughs> These are pretty big holes but it soaks them up pretty well yeah eco mode just like a half a second one second delay sport mode less than half a sec half a second I don't know the exact time but sport mode is just a bit better only complaint here with my seat the CS75 just a nitpick of mine as usual no paddle shifters but I said this is geared for more comfort it's fine for me I noticed the front suspension may be a bit bouncy but it's soft but the rear is just just ever so slightly better than the front for some reason but I understand why the rear is a bit lighter since you're gonna carry what two or three more passengers in here it will level down the suspension when you have more passengers in so driving it a bit more actually very long test to thank you sir for allowing me to drive this far I noticed going over humps the suspension yes it is bouncy but it's not the very harsh pickup like bounciness like it feels like you're jumping on a bed that's that's the kind of suspension this has yeah you may notice it but you'll get used to it it's actually a pleasant experience and then overtaking eco mode yeah i left it in eco mode because i will try sport mode when i go here on the highway in eco mode yeah it may you may have to plan it just ever so slightly i veer to the left lane and then the sudden power will kick in so yeah it will take some time normal mode a bit better let's try sport mode now when I get you to the highway so what else do I think of this CS75 yeah I understand now why it's the most comfortable one like hands down the most comfortable crossover in its class and what I noticed like the likes of the Ford territory I sat in the back before I drove again it is more spacious than that and this is what's amazing with the Chang CS75 as well the price it is 1,375,000 pesos tama sir no? So yes, it's like in the ballpark of the competition. Yes, it might be a bit steep for some, but you kind of get all the tech you need anyway and this much power. And as a city slicker crossover, this is perfect. There's sport mode just a bit better to react. And then, well done. Let me try to floor it. And this truck gets out of the way. Yeah, sport mode just Sport mode just transforms this CS70, it's amazing. It may not be as fast as its competition, but it's plenty fast enough. Let's floor it. The engine will scream, but it's fine. Wow. Wow. That's pretty peppy in a straight line. That's pretty peppy. And brakes. Okay, progressive, but there's more travel than some of its competition but the brakes are strong in general also nice feel to them it's 
it's very light feeling but it's not to the point it's light there's it's air no this one is a progressive brake feel and also at highway speeds notice it's very composed like it doesn't veer here or left it's just stable so that's pretty <laughs> i'm impressed with this cs75 kind of exceeded all of my expectations like with this competition okay i'm speechless and hands down the best looking one not the most beautiful but the most striking looking one this is probably my favorite crossover at the moment now i mean you get that get the looks it might be a divisive for some just being honest but for me i love the looks of this cs75 very aggressive although i want to know what the new cs35 plus is like though and then here let's go take a corner just a bit faster yeah body lean there is but it's fine and then here at the head side the roads here are pretty bad oh my gosh i'm traveling around the speed limit of edsa 60 kilometers per hour there's not much tire noise that's pretty weird in its class and then yeah being edsa one of the toughest roads here in the philippines soaks up the buns pretty well there i say it the ride is near rolls royce it's that comfortable so yeah driving around green hills and then here in edsa and then Shaw Boulevard. This is the surprising thing. I've been averaging 9.8 liters per 100 kilometers, which is this much in kilometers per liter. That's actually not too bad at all for what this is. With this much power, this big of a crossover, and with my driving style, I'm flooring it most of the time. This CS75 is a really, really solid choice if you want a compact crossover. That concludes my review of the Chang'an CS75 Plus. I want to thank Sir Donald, Miss Ara, and then Chang'an so for allowing me to review the CS75 Plus. So hope you guys like and subscribe. And I will see you with more Chang'an reviews. Bye-bye.